welcome back everybody to another Tech Notes installment because anything that's worth doing right is worth doing twice. So I've covered CGH before and how to get to your CGH, but I think I've got a bit more to offer on that. For this, for this little episode, we're going to use this guy as this is the guy I'm currently working on and trying to get his waiting set so he will be the guy hopefully i can get some like you know there's gonna be diagrams i'm gonna try to split screen the link to the relevant calculator as the long acre calculator that was mentioned in the last video has been defunct for all of 2022 20 of all of 2022 so that thing is unusable so i managed to dig around the internet and find one that not only replaces the long acre but I think it's better. So first, let's take a look at the at the scale house and how that's laid out and some of the basics for getting a rig ready to scale. And here it is. This is composed of a part of an IKEA, I think it was a desk. I think it was one of my kids' old desks that they outgrew. So it was disassembled, but you know, it's nice and thick. Uh, it's, you can draw on it with a Sharpie because it's nice white melamine. It cleans up pretty easily. And most importantly, it stays flat. Because the workshop that you're, that you're in right now, you don't know you're in it, but you're in it. The workshop that you're in right now is not level. So it had to be made level because if you want to weigh something, the surface that it sits on has to be level. So that was taken care of years ago when we were corner balancing two wheel drive slashes. So we had this nice little layout and it has inserts with bolts that go into recesses in the bench because the bench is not level. I don't know if you can see that bubble or not, but it is not remotely level. So once we get these set into the little holes, it is level. Like all three of those bubbles are dead middle level. But because this is set up for a slash, we add this piece to the top of it. And you know, nothing changes because it's flat. Everything's level. These are my scale of choice because I, I'm not the guy to go and throw down the money on dedicated RC balancing scales which is something that didn't exist when I assembled this apparatus. I've had these scales about 10 years. They're from Amazon, the Epica, AccuPro, et cetera, et cetera. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is that you want a scale that can hold about five kilos, 11 pounds. More is better, but a 30 pound scale is going to lack. Then you're gonna to start to lose fidelity. So we've got four scales. We turn them all on. For the purposes of this video, I have already set the calculator and will now set the scales to kg because the 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 online calculator everything uh, Im amazingly defaulted to imperial. So we will weigh this rig in kilos. Oh, and when you're when you're going to weigh a vehicle You've got to, you, you got to get it ready. You got to cycle the shocks. You got to move it around. Try to get it sorted towards the center of the scale pads and then let her sit. Then you're going to get four numbers and we'll have a, a, a fancy graphic inset here. And we're going to take these four numbers and I'm going to write them down and then I'm going to transfer them to that. I, I'm going to make a little card and you'll see what the card looks like. And then we're gonna take the numbers from that card, the numbers from here, put them together with some other numbers that we're gonna get in just a moment. Then we're gonna plug them into that calculator and we're gonna get the CGH. And then I will give you a visual representation of where the actual CGH falls on the vehicle itself. So once I've written those numbers down, I now have to weigh the rig in what's called raised. So I make sure I didn't move anything. No, everything looks good. You need two identical objects. These happen to be convenient. 
We know they're the same height, and these two are very close in weight. This one's 89 grams, this one's 101. That doesn't matter, because we're gonna tear them out anyway. Position this like this, same sort of, and then let it sit. And then we're gonna write down these numbers Looks like it's not, it's not sitting. Something's not sitting. You got to just, you got to get it to sit. Sometimes if it's not centered, and then just like before, we'll write these numbers down. And these are your raised height because you'll need to know both of these. And this, this calculator, the Omni calculator, far superior to Long Acre. I've just been programmed to weigh rigs this way, raising the rear a known distance. With the Omni calculator, you can do it multiple ways. You can raise the front. It's, it's just a much better layout. So now I'm going to write these numbers down. And then there are a couple other numbers that we need to get to plug into the calculator to, to find our actual CGH. I would also like to point out at this juncture, in the spirit of full transparency, this is not going to be 100% accurate. It simply cannot be. Why can't it be, you ask? Well, you have multiple components of your suspension, and they're working all the time. This is the component of your sprung suspension, and this is the component of your unsprung suspension. This is a spring. So when we raise one end of the vehicle, more weight is going to effectively transfer in a way, it is dynamic weight transfer. What we're looking at to truly find the CGH is the static weight transfer. But to do that would be an episode in real, real minutia. What you would have to do is get your rig in ready to run configuration, sitting on a flat surface. You would then need to caliper the length of your damper in resting position. Then you would have to make simulacrums of your shocks, basically out of, I guess the best way to do it would be turnbuckles. So you would have to install a turnbuckle link, the exact length of the shock. Like if this guy at his compressed right there is say 80 millimeters, we would need an 80 millimeter turnbuckle locked in right there. Then we would have to measure our tires uncompressed vertically right? Which we will do. We can do that. That is 114 millimeters. 11.4 centimeters. So you would have to make four discs, hard, rigid discs that are 11.4 millimeters. Put them on in place of the tires because you need to take out that suspension compression. But I'm not particularly interested in getting numbers that fine. We're not sending this to the moon. We just want to get an idea of what changes made to the sprung and unsprung weights are doing to the vehicle's dynamic behavior. So we have level numbers for each corner, and we have raised numbers for each corner. Then we need to know the wheelbase which on this rig is 309, we'll call it 310, 310 millimeter wheelbase. And then this particular calculator uses the radius of the wheel. Is that correct? Yes, wheel radius in centimeters, which this is a, this is a moment, like I got, I, I've had this here forever because both from cycling and this, I've been used to measuring the circumference of the tire. So the first time I put this into the calculator, I'm not ashamed to admit it. The first time I put this in, I had measured the circumference. I didn't pay attention. I plugged it in and it said height of mass center was 17 inches off the ground because yeah, a 15 inch wheel radius is a, is a fairly big wheel, particularly for a vehicle this small. But I, I don't need the flexi. So we will do, we will do the front as the front is the end that has weight transferred to it. And I would say the radius is, I mean, we can just take it from the height. What did I say the height was? 114? 
So we're going to call it 57. So if the height of the wheel is 114, the radius is going to be 57. So now we have those numbers. We have the, 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 the static weights, we have the raised weights, we've got our wheelbase, and we've got our wheel radius. Now we will plug all of those numbers into the calculator, and that thing is going to give us our CGH. And then I'm going to see if I can't take a still image of this rig and, and doctor it up with some fancy graphics so that you can actually see where the CGH is. I don't know. I, I left this body half pinned on and it, it kind of, it kind of tweaked it. It's weird. Anyway, you will get to see where the actual CGH is on the side of this vehicle. And, and if we can get a picture straight down from the top, you can see where that CGH is, the actual point generally somewhere about there ish i'm gonna say right about there there's the door handle so like imagine a triangle between these i'm gonna guess the cgh is gonna come out somewhere around here which is typical going as low tech as possible the weight of that vehicle is <laughs> is 2,575 grams, which is 2.575 kilograms. Uh, that would have gotten a fantastic uh, uh, number. So it was 310 millimeters, which is uh, 31 centimeters, yes. The weight of the front axle is 1,516 grams, which is 1 1.516 kilograms. And then, and look at that, it just, it just auto fills the rest of it out for us. You can't, you can't ask for more than that. We raised it a height of, and I, I neglected to do the math on this one. So I'm gonna have to do this to inches because I forgot, I, I know this number by heart, 4.125 inches. The radius of the wheels is 5.7 centimeters. The front axle weight with the wheels raised is 1.615 kilograms, which indeed, yes, the rear axle weight is 0.96, giving us the height of mass center of 2.381 centimeters. I have to understand that being from the ground. So then we will look at the car track, and that is center to center. I neglected to measure that off camera right now. I am doing that. It's easy on the hunks. Because there's some toe on this vehicle, I should I should measure the front and the back and split the difference because it's about it's about 220 on the front and 220 on the back that is centimeters. So we will call it 22.2 centimeters and then the left side weight oh i didn't do that this is where the metric system really comes in handy 518 plus 776 is 1294 so 1.294 and then i only got to do one side that's pretty great so the distance 11. oh okay so uh, there was almost too many decimals for my brain so the cross the, 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 the side to side weight, we haven't gotten across yet. I'll get to cross. The side to side weight, the center, the center line of the vehicle is 0 0.044 centimeters. So less than half a centimeter off the center line and it's towards X. So it's towards the driver's side. So let me, let me get back to where we can look at the rig and then I can try to figure this out as I'm helping you figure this out. So we will talk for a moment about side to side weight, center line, wh where the center of gravity falls left to right. Though I honestly, I don't think it's that, Im it's not that important unless it's really out of whack. Because 11.44, centimeters, 11.044 centimeters from the center line, puts the center right on this side of the, of the, of the hood. 
So it's that it's that far off to that far off to one side. It moved it to right over there. What I do consider to be important is cross weight. And cross weight is the weight of this tire and this tire added together. Then you take that, that number, like for instance, this one is 776 grams or 0.76 kilos. And this one is 541 level static. That is 1,317 grams, which is 51.7% of the weight is mounted between these. So you have a 51.7% cross weight, which means that, what is that, 48.3 is this way. It's not perfect, but when it's raised to its raised height like this, this wheel then has 503 grams, and this one has 825 which gives us a cross weight of 1,328 grams, which is a cross weight of 51.5%. It was like a 10th of a percent difference. So that, that dynamic behavior is what I believe is more important than just straight static cross weight. If, it, if the rig raises like this and a ton of weight throws over to that tire or throws over to that tire, or this tire unloads a huge amount, because for whatever reason, the way suspension behaves dynamically, it's almost never going to be an even amount moving from each tire to each tire. Like, th there are many instances where this tire loses the most weight when raised, but this tire gains the most weight. And in this event, this tire lost... This tire lost the most. It lost about 60 grams. This guy lost just under 40 this guy picked up 50, and this guy picked up about 50. So it was evenly split in the front, but the loss from the rear was slightly different. Like you see, for some reason, the back end of the body sits a little, and that's why we do this stuff. Like that 51.5 cross, is it enough for me to chase it down? Because no matter what you do, this isn't a McLaren F1 car, so we're never going to achieve full symmetry. A servo weighs about 60 grams. This guy weighs about 115, 120. So already, there's more weight over here. I did get this servo mostly in the center line of the vehicle, but all of his stuff is over here. Does all that stuff outweigh the weight of the motor because every small amount you move whether you move it fore or aft side to side just taking like if i stuck weights right here on this side it doesn't guarantee the cross would get any better because the cross is a dynamic measurement and as i said before and we'll say again these are not absolute 100 percent infallible numbers because we haven't isolated the unsprung spring and we haven't isolated the sprung springs either. The numbers would likely be different if shock analogs were put in place. That's the word I was looking for earlier. If shock analogs and wheel analogs were put in place. Because you can't do this. One might think, well, let me just like put some spools or blocks or something and then weigh it without the wheels. But you can't. You can't. Also... The, the If you were going to make a wheel analog, that wheel analog would have to be as close as possible to the weight of the actual wheel. Because then otherwise the, the weights are not going to be accurate. Because despite these being the same tires with essentially the same foams, like these two are the same, these two are the same. If you put them on the scales, there's going to be a couple grams difference between all of them. That's just the way it is. So what I will do in here is I will... I will see if what I said comes true. There will be a graphic appearing right around now showing a photograph of this with some lines on it so that you can see if my guess as to the location of the CGH was correct. And the CGH isn't a thing that we just get to get and have it. It is important number. I should mention... This vehicle has 58.9% front weight. And that would be what? 
41.1% rear weight, if my math is correct. This is about the limit of my arithmetic skills. I can, I can work with some fractions. My brain is still thinking in Imperial and I'm trying to do this all in metric because you know, it actually is a little bit easier. You're just adding whole numbers. So that's how this rig sits. I mean, if I was looking at 58.89, I would just call it 59% front weight. So 59.41. And he seems to do pretty well with that, but there is the opportunity to add and remove weight. Like you can get these boxes of automotive weights. They're steel now, so they're a little bigger than back when they were lead, but they're nice and black and unobtrusive and they have self-adhesive. And each one is seven grams. So four of them adds an ounce and you can stick them on your servo. You can stick them where, particularly if you have servo on axle. The, the only problem with them being that if you're on a CMS rig like this one, there's not a ton of places where you can just slap weight on it because anywhere else, if I add weight, I'm adding sprung weight and I generally don't want to add sprung weight, but that's another topic for another time, un, uh, unsprung versus sprung weight. So that's how you get CGH. Hopefully you're staring at a still image with some triangles on it. And hopefully I gave you an idea of how to do this. Back when I bought those scales on Amazon, they were like $8 a piece. I, I don't know what they are now. And you'll probably have to hide them from any other spouse or significant other, because if someone sees you buying four kitchen scales, they're going to think you've gone insane. So thanks for watching this one, everybody. I hope it was instructive because not a lot of people apparently saw the last one. So hopefully more people will see this one. Hopefully this one looks better uh, graphically and appearance wise and sounds better. I don't know. But uh, look, if you have any other tech related questions, feel free to ask them below and I will address them to the best of my ability. So like, comment, subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. We genuinely look forward to seeing you in whatever comes next.